So inflation is sitting at around 16.69% year on year. We've seen a, a point naught, naught, uh, point naught, uh, naught, uh, uh, 4% drop uh, on a monthly basis. So marginal drop that we've actually seen, but it seems that it's spurring quite a bit of optimism because this could actually prompt uh, a bit of uh, optimism when it comes to the uh, interest rate scenario uh, that's playing out going forward. Uh, do you think that we could actually see a drop, Wolfgang, going forward in Kenya, or do you think that it's still early days? Thank you, Eleni. In general, I would say you know, I'm glad if people are very optimistic now. I guess for many it's a huge relief that after this very difficult month of high inflation, of a very wobbly shilling, that things seem to be back onto more stable waters. As um, you and others have said, you know, 16 to 17 percent is still a very high number for Kenya and the region. But there are various reasons and factors why inflation is expected to go down, and there are three fundamental reasons. One, that the rains have been quite good and food prices have come down, food production is up. That's the key driver of inflation still. Secondly, you have what is called the base effect, um, that inflation started to increase last year in March, February, March, and then went up a lot. And so you're now comparing this year against a higher level of last year. And so you would expect to see this year almost the mirror of last year, that it started high but comes down uh, lower and lower over the year if no other yeah. intervening factors come there. The opposite of last year. And last but not least, uh, the central bank has responded very sh strongly at the end of last year, and so you have a tighter monetary environment. So these are the three reasons why we think inflation should continue to go down. Well, Wolfgang, let's touch, touch on the transport cost because that was down quite significantly. I mean, down 653 basis points to around almost 15.9% uh, year on year. Food also declining significantly, sitting at 22% though uh, year on year. Although we have seen a decline, these numbers are still relatively high and it seems that the hotels and the restaurants are pushing inflation slightly higher, higher because we saw a nominal increase on a month-on-month -month basis there. So we're seeing counteracting factors playing out. Absolutely. You indeed are right that core inflation is still picking up and that's a concern because that takes a long time again to, 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 to get that under control and that's why the interest rate environment is likely to be tight going forward because that's what the central bank ultimately targets. The other concerning factor is that oil prices are going up and they're going up not because global growth is recovering on a substantial pace but because of geopolitical factors and the challenges with Iran and so that could if in a worst case uh, create a similar scenario as it was last year with the Middle Eastern and Europe uh, with the Middle Eastern and Libyan situation so these are the reasons why um, one still needs to be cautious going forward. Yeah, Wolfgang let's also just touch on the interest rate environment again I mentioned uh, you know we could actually see an interest rate cut going forward we're sitting at around 18 percent I remember for some time last year uh, there was a big push for the banks to actually bring down their lending rates and we were looking at lending rates of between like 13 and 16 percent that has changed so dramatically tell us about how you see this playing out and how banks and the overall lending environment is going to be affected because of an 18 percent interest rate environment now interest rates will come down when inflation expectations will come down substantially and as we have said, there's still early days to see how that unfolds. Secondly, lending to the private sector still remains robust and high, surprisingly high. It's in the above 30% at end December. That actually is one aspect, again, of the, of the optimism you mentioned before. So um, the thirdly, and that's part of the broader debate, is how do you bring lending rates down? How do you bring what's called the spread um, to, to a lower level? And there the simple answer is, don't control prices, get yeah. competition to work. That has worked in other sectors, that has worked in other countries. If you want to fiddle and try to control prices, what will happen is you create a black market and you ultimately get higher prices. Well, I mean, looking at the core inflation number versus the actual CPI number, it seems that there is a, still a slight discrepancy there, but the truth is the growth rates are still quite robust, and you mentioned that lending to the private sector also looking quite strong. Uh, so it seems that despite the fact that we've got this very high inflation scenario, it is still being met with high growth. Yes, with, I would say reasonably high growth. Uh, we projected Kenya was around 4.3% last year and this year could reach 5%. That is good for Kenya um, in the long-term perspective. 
in general, it should be the minimum a country like Kenya with that strong endowments, with that business sector drive, should reach. Yeah. Now, we are in election year. In election years, people are always more cautious, especially in Kenya. But just coming back and wrapping up on inflation, you have these countervailing trends. That's why it's good to disentangle it, as you do in your show. You have still high food prices that are coming down. You still have lower core inflation, which is going up. And so that's a bit the counter trends. And so you don't want to have a situation that food prices come down a lot, which generally you, you appreciate. But then core inflation is getting to a higher level. Well, what, what about the, the shilling? Let's just touch on that very quickly. When we saw it hitting 107 uh, to the US dollar, uh, it was down around 25%, quite a, lo a lot of weakness. It's now stabilized at around 82 or so to the US dollar. This is also a very big risk to the inflation outlook, isn't it? Yeah, there's always a risk that, indeed, if uh, oil prices again come up and then the, you get a scenario like last year. Now, the difference is indeed that I think the broader business sense that you described is much more positive now. And secondly, that the policy response has been also uh, different and stronger. So with a high interest rate regime, you probably get less risk on the shilling. But there is a sense, uh, definitely, as you talked about in your, pre in your show previously, that at 82, 83, the shilling is surprisingly robust and it could hit some of the exporters.